<laughs> still there. All right, we're gonna we're gonna keep this fun going. Up next, very very funny comedian. He has a regular show on Wednesdays in the city. Please welcome the very funny Mr. Kenny Warren. Y'all give it up. Y'all give it up for uh, Hector one more time, man. Giving us an opportunity to come be on TV like this is beautiful. I love this crowd right here. Said I wasn't going to say nothing about nobody, but. <laughs> Let's get to know each other a little bit. My name is Kenny Warren, a.k.a. the average black man. And I'm from Portland, Oregon. And you know people always ask me the same question. It's black people in Portland? <laughs> Hell no, I left. <laughs> so you know Portland, I just visited a couple weeks ago, right? And when I, when I left Portland 10 years ago, it was 2% black. 2% black, which means I don't care how hood you think you are if your name is T-Bone, Peanut, Killer, Murder, you grew up with some white friends. I'll never forget the first time I was at one of my white friends' house. I got to shout him out. His name is Chris Wilson. He said, shout me out on Facebook. We was playing Atari, so that lets you know how old I am. <laughs> his mom came in and was like, put the game away and finish your homework. This kid looks at his mom and calls her a bitch. I couldn't believe it. I said, I can't believe it. <laughs> so I went home and told my mom about it. I was like, mom, you won't believe this kid called his mom a B. My mom was like, boy, if you ever talk to me like that, I will beat the black off you. <laughs> and I was like, well, then I'll be white. And by law, I can only get time out. <laughs> yeah, I've been like this for years. So like I said, I just went back to Portland a couple weeks ago, and I hadn't been there for a while, and they had this 8,000 people participate in this butt-naked bike ride. <laughs> so, you know, I wasn't planning on going there, per se, but we got caught in traffic. So when I seen all the riders going past, I did what any of the other African-American red-blooded person would do. I got out and started filming. <laughs> World star! One of the writers, one of the ladies looked at me and was like, pervert! And I was like, I got clothes on. <laughs> Talk to your 7,999 friends with those chafe booties. <laughs> so I moved to New York in uh, 2004. Like I said, and, um, I'm a barber. I've been cutting hair for 28 years. I had to build my clientele up, so I had to cut a few kids. Now, I'm the average black man, and I love the kids, no Michael Jackson, but <laughs> cutting their hair, you know, it make you sweat a little bit. So this kid was moving around, grabbing the clipper cord, and the mom, she saw the frustration in my face. So she was like, Kenny, you have to be patient with him because he's autistic. Now, I was fresh from Oregon. We were still on retarded. So I was like, autistic, I don't want him to draw no pictures. I just want him to be still so I can cut his damn hair. <laughs> you wrong for laughing at that. Autism is real. <laughs> and I work with a lot of different characters, you know. I work with cats that, you know, may make up names or say words the wrong way. And when you try to correct them, they say, you know what I was talking about. I got a cat that worked next to me. And he asked me, do you think? Walt really had sex with 10,000 women? And I was like, Walt? He said, Chamberlain. I said, man, his name was Will Chamberlain. He said, man, you knew what I was talking about. I said, no, I thought you was talking about Walt Disney. <laughs> and I was going to say, I don't think Walt was doing too much sexing. He was doing a whole lot of drawing. <laughs> Walt was autistic. <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, I work at the barbershop. You know what I'm saying? There's no human resources there. So we talk about everybody. White people, black people, Spanish people, Asians, people in wheelchairs, midgets. <laughs> we talk about people in wheelchairs because they be doing some disrespectful stuff sometimes. I had a dude at the shop the other day. He waiting on the barber on the other side of me. And he was looking at his watch and looking at me and was like, yo, what's up? Where's he at? I called him an hour ago. And I was like, man, relax, man. It ain't like you got to run no errands. <laughs> I didn't tell him to take a seat. And the other day we had a conversation. We had a, it was a, more of a debate of whether or not you would have sex with a midget. <laughs> so my boy next to me, he was like, man, just think about it, man. Your penis and their hand is going to look big as hell. <laughs> and I was like, I know, man, but their hands look like flippers. That's like a hand job by a dolphin, man. That's not. 
So we ended up going to this hookah bar. And at the hookah bar, it was some belly dancers, and one of them turned out to be a midget. <laughs> now, I brought sand to the beach, so I couldn't really say too much, but I was hating all night on my boy while he was flirting with the midget. I'm looking at her like, dang, that's the kind of midget right there that you could bring home to your mama. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She was cutest. I don't know what. Her head wasn't even that big. <laughs> and I was thinking, if I brought that midget home to my mom, I could hear my mom right now talking about, you turned out to be half the man I thought you was going to be. <laughs> so I went back. After we left, I went back to the scene of the crime. I had to go, you know, for a little research and development. I went back by myself this time. No saying. So when I got there, the midget was there again, y'all. She was dancing. But I took, my, I took my chance. I went and I was like, yo, let me get you a shot. She took it. She jumped a little butt up on the, on the stool. And then when we took the shot, she looked me in my eyes and touched me on my arm and some Lord of the Rings type stuff happened. <laughs> Next thing you know, me and the midget was making out, man. So I had another shot, because I knew this was going somewhere. We had one more shot, and I told the midget, listen, let's get out of here. She was like, let's go. So I went, I got outside, opened up the cab door. She went, jumped in like a little puppy, and we headed uptown. When I got home, I had to smoke a blunt, because it was some bucket list stuff going on now. <laughs> After that, things got wild. Me and the midget, we got busy. I started throwing her in the air, catching her. Spinning her around. It was going down in there. But in the morning, I had to figure out how to get her out without me having to walk out with her. I just thought it would look funny, me walking down the street with a little kid. <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit more about myself, personal stuff. I'm a bachelor, y'all. A thoughtful bachelor. Oh, go ahead and clap for that. Y'all clapping for bachelor? Yeah, I'm a thoughtful bachelor, y'all. I got the MTA subway map on my shower curtain so she can see how to get her butt home in the morning. <laughs> That's that Mavericks cigarette laugh right there. <laughs> Shout out to Maverick cigarettes, baby. <laughs> Smoked by all the best comedians in the U.S. <laughs> I, better get my, I better get my money for that. <laughs> I told you I got a box for you. At <laughs> so how you guys feel about sports? Yeah, I, I like sports as well. Um, I'm kind of glad that they kicked LeBron out of the Illuminati. Yeah, he, for the last couple years, he was in it, though. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Last year, they won 27 games in a row. LeBron went 10 games without no fouls being called on him. Now, how could somebody be 6'9", 270, and he ain't bump into nobody for 10 games? I'm 5'11", 180 pounds. I got on train on 145th Street. When I got off on 50th Street, y'all, I had four fouls, y'all. I bumped into four people. It just ain't right. Just ain't right. So he said, I got one minute. I like saying that, man. It's okay. Don't worry about it, Hector. We just, we just vibing right now. I feel like y'all laugh real good and everything, so I ain't mad at y'all. I ain't going to throw nobody's drinks over. Y'all good. Y'all good. All right, so like I said, working uptown is crazy. You got all different type of characters coming through the barbershop. We got a dude that liked to sell porn and oils. <laughs> so we gave him the nickname Butt Naked My Brother. <laughs> Funny thing is, if you catch him out of the shop, he'll give you the runaround and be like, oh, hey, 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 my brother, I'm not into all that. And I'm just like, listen, man, I like a man to stand behind his product. <laughs> and it's amazing because selling porn and oils was such an innovative idea because I guess you could use the oil while you're watching the porn. <laughs> I'm Kenny Warren, the average black man. Thank you for your time. Kenny, Kenny, Kenny Warren, Warren, everybody. Keep it going for Kenny Warren. Thank you, Kenny, for tearing down that fourth wall. Yeah. yeah, Hector's telling me I got a minute left. <laughs> now they have visions of some fat guy dressed in black going. <laughs> Good times. Good stuff. Give another round of applause for Mr. Kenny Warren. <laughs>